you've had eight hours, or even 24 hours, to walk this planet, where would you be right this minute? Now, for any of you that did not say right here, I'd like you to stop for a minute and ask yourself, then why are you here? This is not a test. You don't have to tell me your answer. But I really want you to be clear on what you're thinking right now. Why are you here right now? What brought you here? The next question that I'm going to ask you is, Knowing that you were coming here today, were you on time? Were you running late? And what is your story for why you were running late? Because we all have stories, right? Um, well, I'm a mom. I had to get my kids off to school. Um, my husband really needed me to iron his shirt. He's got a very important meeting today. The traffic. Whatever the story is. There's no right or wrong, it's just whatever the story is, this is to make you think. So when you're not on time, and you're not showing up in your power, and you're not feeling like you are one, you're 100%, why is that? What is the story that you tell yourself for why that's okay? Because as women, we tend to always be doing something for someone else. It's okay, I can be late today, I've got to drop the kids off. It's okay, I can be late today because fill in the blank. But what about you? When do you matter? So going back to the question I asked you at the beginning, if you knew you had eight hours, even 24 hours to walk this earth, would you be where you are right now? Because if your answer is yes, you're here because you want to be here. Like, I'm here because I want to be here. This is my passion. This is what I love to do. And if I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory, it's going to be doing what I really want to do. And I can't think of anything that I want to do more than what I do. Life coaching, speaking to women's groups, I mean, it just makes me very happy. I want you to think about the story that you tell yourself. Why it's okay to put yourself second, third, a hundred. Why is that story okay? Because we all have stories in our life, right? We all have stories that we tell ourselves that either move us closer to the success we want in life. Like, I'm so proud of myself. I just took that class. I bless you. I just um, signed up with that for that seminar. I'm working with a mentor. I'm working with a life coach. I feel so empowered. <laughs> that stories that's moving you closer to your success. Then we have stories like, oh, I hope this was the right outfit to wear today. I hope I put it together right. I hope that my hair looks okay today. Maybe I shouldn't have gone today. Um, gosh, I just don't know if I've got enough knowledge. I don't know why I'm not doing well in my business. I'm never going to make the money that I want to make. I'm never going to be thin enough. I'm never going to be smart enough. I'm never, I'm never, I'm never. These are stories we tell ourselves and stories like these that move us farther from our success. Yes or yes? Yes. yes. Okay. You know, success can be a very fearful thing. Marianne Williamson says, it's not our light, it's not our darkness that frightens us most, it's our light. And when you really think about that, what would happen if you took that next step towards success? Ooh, it's kind of a scary thing. Yeah. It just feels better to stay in my comfort zone. We all have a story about why we stay where we stay. So now I'm going to share a story with you. Uh, about a month ago, I was going through something horrific. I'm just going to say that, horrific. Now, it wasn't life-shattering, but for me it was. And I could not figure out an answer. I couldn't get out of it. And because it was so insurmountable to me, I was literally crying at the drop of a hat. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't keep going on like this. i got to figure this out, you know? This is not good. What's wrong? And I was frustrated and mad at myself because this is what I do. I help other people.
people figure this out. I'm very good at figuring out what I'm thinking and why am I thinking that way and how is my thinking limiting me or pushing me forward and what can I do more of and less of. I'm really good at that. But this, it was not happening. So I thought, all right, I'm going to just talk to my life coach at our next session and I'm going to just blurt it all out there. Okay, I did. I'm crying, like, you know, literally crying. Like, <laughs> I can't figure this out. <laughs> like, 20 minutes, I think, I was just crying. Shoot, man, I only had an hour with her, you know? I'm like, wasting my time. And that was giving me even more frustration because I'm paying her by the hour. You know? It's frustrating. If I'm going to fall apart, I want to fall apart on my time when no one's charging me. Come on. Okay, so to say that I was being challenged is an understatement. I'm just going to say that. I'm going to put that out there right now. And you know, I know a lot of people think, oh, Nancy, you have problems? Because everybody thinks Nancy doesn't have problems. Nancy's always happy. Nancy's always laughing. Nancy's a yeah, Nancy's got challenges because I also have stories, right? I have stories about why I am where I am. Or the thing is, I've learned to recognize my stories. I've learned to recognize if my stories are pushing me forward or if my stories are holding me back. So when I realize that my story is holding me back, I know that's an SOS, like I gotta get some help because I'm not figuring this out on my own. This was a challenge for me and I did not know it until I started trying to prepare for the show. And so, man, Maybe I could just be sick tomorrow. But you can't be sick for your own show. Right? There was nobody there to fill in for me. And I was telling my husband, oh, man, I am just feeling like, oh. And he goes, I know, I see this. I said, What's wrong? I don't know. I said, yes, I do know. You know what it is? This is for all the marbles. Seriously. This, I have worked all my life for this. That was huge, really huge. So now see, I have put myself out there in a different way. So now what's the story? Now the story is, how are people going to take this? Well, you know what, in hindsight, and in all reality, it doesn't matter, right? Because the only person we have to face is ourselves. The only person we have to love is ourself. And when you're loving yourself, when you're really happy with yourself, when you're like partying like purple inside your head all the time, oh my gosh, that's such a fabulous place to be. Even though my grandkids go, oh, they're grandkids. <laughs> it's such a happy place to be, let me tell you. So, um, about, a couple, about a week or so ago, I was talking with someone who, who knows me quite well, who's known me for quite some time. And uh, this was four days before, five days before my show this past Monday. Okay, so I'm already, you know, got this going on in me about working through this and everything. And she said to me, Nancy, I, I feel like there's something I need to tell you, but I want you to know that I'm telling you in a very loving way, and I just don't know if you're going to be able to take it well. And I said, you know me, I, tell me anything. Nothing you say or do is going to bother me. All right, but it's coming from a lo very loving place. And I said, okay. And she said, you really need to stop saying, I love my life. <laughs> and I said, really? Why? Why? And she goes, it, you just got to stop. She's like, Nancy, that's like Bill Gates getting up there and going, hey, I'm Bill Gates. I'm rich. I'm rich. And I'm thinking, well, he is rich. <laughs> so if he got up there and said, hey, I'm Bill Gates and I'm rich, I'd be like, yeah, you are. But, but because I've known her for such a long time, you know, feedback is feedback. And I thought, oh, okay, so am I putting something negative out there? Something that I felt was like coming from here and, you know, the party like purple inside me and happiness and... Wow, am I putting something negative out there? That is not my intention, never my intention. I really had to think about this. But anyone who's ever heard me speak or worked with me, you know 
Self-talk is very important, right? It's not what someone says to you, it's what you say to yourself after they stop speaking. Now, when you get really good at listening to your self-talk, then you can understand if it's positive self-talk or negative self-talk. Or if it's self-talk that's trying to tell you, you know, you might want to kind of listen to this because maybe it's not exactly wrong and it's not 100% right, but something needs to be changed. So I thought about what she said, no, I agonized over what she said for two days. Truly, I did. And then I thought, why did she have to say this right before the show? Come on. So the morning of the show, here's what I came up with. You know what? I really do love my life. And for very many years, I didn't think my life was worth loving. So I decided to continue letting people know that I love my life. So do you see how stories that you tell yourself can keep you farther from your success or move you closer to your success? A lot of people have heard of a vision board. And you know why a vision board is so very important. Because we speak in words, we think in pictures. And when you create a vision board, you start to put something in your head that's going to move you closer to that goal or something better. I'm going to suggest that each one of you consider creating a success board. Because when you look at your success board and you are reminded of the successes in your life, you will be surprised at how your story is going to start to change. Mm -hmm. Because when life is tough, when things are pulling you down and you're feeling like there's nowhere to go, when you really start looking at the successes that you've created in your life, that's when you realize that you're accepting who you are. You're accepting success and you're ready. You've, you've stepped through the door. I stepped through the door there. I stepped through the door there. I stepped... Jeez, if I could do that, why can't I get through this? You know, when I was competing in karate, I can remember the very first time I competed. I was like, and because it was so intimidating for me to get out there and look at these judges and pronounce who I am, and I know I was like this, and I'm like, and I would get out there, and I knew what I was supposed to do. I practiced it. In the grocery store, I'd be like, oh, damn, yes, got it. People would look at me and go, what are you doing? Oh, oh sorry, I didn't know. In my sleep, I'm practicing. I know it, I know it, I know it. And I would get out on the floor, and it's like a wall of white would come down. And I'd have to bow out. It's all I could do. Or look like an idiot. Of course, I probably look like an idiot anyway. But you know what? I didn't stop. I was mad at myself, and I tried again. And I kept saying, why am I so intimidated? And the farther I studied, I realized that I was putting those black belts who were judging me in the ring up here. But you know what? They're just people. How many of you have ever worked at a corporate job where the CEO is in the corner office and you're like afraid to go talk to him? He's a person. He'll probably love it if you'd knock on the door. Yo, George, <laughs> morning. So what? Even if he thinks you're a goof, but you know what? George is going to remember you. And when it comes time for raises or something, hey, what about that girl who's always saying good morning to me? Do you see it stepping out of your comfort zone? It's changing the story in your head, and it's moving forward.